our dear viewers and welcome to a new edition of Africa today um, in our episode today we are going to talk about the vaccination in the African continent and uh, indeed it's the vaccination for the COVID-19 and how the African continent is ready actually to face the uh, pandemic and its repercussion and we'll start with this report where Sudan's Foreign Minister Maryam al Fadi al-Mahdi said that her country rejects to enter into any military confrontations to resolve the issue of the Renaissance Dam more in the following report Sudanese Foreign Minister Maryam Sadiq said on Friday that Ethiopia stabbed Sudan in the back with the first filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam in July 2020. In a lecture in Qatar on Friday, Sadiq said that Ethiopia wanted to use its power over water resources to pressure Sudan. She added that Khartoum won't give up its national sovereignty nor its water security. The statements of the Sudanese Foreign Minister come as Ethiopia gears up for the second filling of the GERD in July, despite Egyptian and Sudanese complete rejection of the filling absent a legally binding agreement on the dam's operation. The second filling will collect around 18.4 billion cubic meters of Blue Nile water, up from the 4.9 billion cubic meters withheld during the first filling last year. Sudan fears the GERD will put the operation of its Rosaires Dam and the lives of its citizens, approximately 20 million people, at a very high risk if an agreement regulating its operation and filling is not reached before the second filling. During the lecture attended by diplomats and reporters in the Qatari capital, the Sudanese foreign minister criticized the populist and outdated policies that Ethiopia has tried to promote, pitting Africans against Arabs. She said that Sudan has legal, political and diplomatic options to make Ethiopia sign a legally binding agreement without revealing those options. Cairo said it is planning to produce coronavirus vaccines in Egypt to achieve sufficiency domestically and then to export them to the African countries in cooperation with the Egyptian Authority for Unified Procurement. More details. The plan to produce coronavirus vaccines in Egypt was announced during a meeting held between the Egyptian Ministry of Health with the head of the vaccine authority, Baha Eddin Zidan, on Thursday. The ministry also revealed the readiness of the head of the Egyptian holding company for biological products and vaccines, Vaxera's factory, in the 6th of October city to produce coronavirus vaccine Sinovac in Egypt, besides the company's other factory in the Haguza area, Giza. The first batch of China's Sinovac vaccine is reportedly expected within the coming few days. The ministry said previously that the Sinovac vaccine will be provided to citizens within a maximum of six weeks and nearly 40 million doses will be produced by the end of the year. It said that the Chinese manufacturing technology will be transferred to Egypt, stressing that the authorities have allocated 750 million pounds to complete the vaccine production process. The ministry affirmed that there is no difference between the Sinovac vaccine, which was manufactured in Egypt, and the Chinese imported version. Cairo says it plans to make Egypt a regional hub for producing the vaccine in Africa after meeting the local needs, as the Vaxera would be the main manufacturer to the Chinese Sinovac in Africa. Over 30 million COVID-19 vaccinations have been administered across the African continent. More details with Sameh Sharif. As of June 19, confirmed cases of COVID-19 from 55 African countries reached 5,155,675 while over 31,155,299 vaccinations have been administered across the continent. Reported deaths in Africa reached 136,673 and 4,586,536 people have recovered. South Africa has the most reported cases. Other most affected countries are Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, Ethiopia, Libya and Kenya. The numbers are compiled by the Center for Systems Science and Engineering CSSE at Johns Hopkins University using statistics from the World Health Organization and other international institutions as well as national and regional public health departments.
To shed more light on the vaccination, uh, we are very much delighted to have uh, with us over the phone uh, Dr. Salah Abdullah, our political analyst uh, and health expert. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, welcome. Welcome, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Dr. Abdullah Cairo said it is planning to produce anti coronavirus vaccines in Egypt to achieve sufficiency domestically and then to export them to African countries. How do you see that uh, step, sir? This step is very important and essential. The problem now that the rich countries have enough vaccines for their people mm -hmm. and they vaccinate a great number, mm -hmm. millions of people, yes. uh, especially in the United States and in Europe. Mm -hmm. But the problem of Africa, because of the African countries are yes. very poor, so they have not you know, enough vaccines for their citizens. This problem, of course, can reflect itself in the future because the disease can be uh, in Africa and yeah. it's reached spread again to the other countries. Indeed. That's why this step of producing the vaccine in Egypt with uh, one of the great countries which is producing, mm -hmm. uh, which have the, uh, which uh, producing the vaccine. Yeah will help in uh, having enough vaccines to uh, distribute to the African countries. Mm. And of course, this will increase the number of vaccinated people in Africa yeah. and will reach with the continent to the level that at least 50% mm. or 60% of the population can be vaccinated. Yeah. And this will reach us to the safest point and which they said the point zero where there is no infection. Yeah. So the steps which happen in Egypt now is very important and essential to the African countries and it is great effort from Egyptian uh, government mm -hmm. and from the Ministry of Health yeah. to start that project for producing the vaccine for Egypt and for the African countries. Uh -huh. And of course still Africa need to contact other countries than China to have their own uh, agreement to produce their own vaccines also in, in mm. Egypt or in another country to supply more to Africa because still mm. in Africa, you know, we didn't have more than 3 million vaccinated from around 300 million. Mm. So the, the space is too yes. much. So we still need effort. But anyhow, yeah. the step which happened from Egypt here with China is a very important step and it is in the correct way. Mm. And uh, we hope that this will open the door for more uh, rich countries to support. Yes. That's why to save the African continent. Yes. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, how would such a move actually impact the fight of the disease in the African continent? Well, still the disease in the African continent is better than other countries mm. for many, many reasons. You know, the spaces in Africa is very wide, so the population are not crowded mm. except in some of the towns, especially in North Africa, like, uh, yeah, like Cairo, like Tunis, mm. like Algeria, and so on, and some also of the towns in uh, South Africa. But most of the African countries, the spaces are too wide, yes. so the separation are there. Also, the weather in Africa is making the virus inactive. It doesn't mm. kill the virus, but it makes it inactive or less activity. And this is, reduces the number of uh, the infection. So Africa is still not in the red line, but of course, Ignoring uh, vaccination of the African people will reach the level that the number of uh, infections will increase by time mm. and the number of deaths will increase yeah. and Africa will reach the red line, which can be a source of infection to the other continents in the world. Yeah. That's why we say that vaccination mm. to all the African countries is very important. Mm -hmm. Cooperation between the rich and poor countries is very important. The role which Egypt is playing now to help Africa is very mm -hmm. important. 
Dr. Abdullah, how soon do you expect the jobs to be available? Can you repeat the question, please? How soon do you expect the jobs to be available? Yes, for the first vaccine, which is, is, is now uh, prepared in Egypt with China, I think it will be available within a few uh, weeks. Yeah. To a few months, we'll, we'll have enough uh, number of But this, mm. uh, of course, in the long run, is not enough. Yeah. So we need more, more more cooperation from China to give more uh, mm. amount for production and from other countries to, 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 to make or mm. to produce other vaccines because you need at least at least uh, 100 million doses to Africa, at least 100 million doses and this mm. is a great number. So now you are producing around 3 million doses. Mm. And it will, uh, a part of it will be to Egypt and part will go to the African countries, but still we need more. Still the space mm. is wide. So that's why I said uh, mm. more negotiation, more effort with the rich countries, especially the United States and Germany and Britain, can help in this field. Besides, of course, what China is doing and it is very good. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, how do you weigh the severity of the cases in Africa during the third wave of the pandemic? The third uh, wave in Africa is vast uh, to a great extent uh, acceptable. You know, yeah. if you compare Africa, for example, with India, which is, uh, yeah. uh, you will find the, the, the different it's too mm. much, you know. In in, 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 in in India, as example, you have 23 or 25 cases per yes. day. But in Africa, it can't reach up to 3,000. So the question is still in Africa under control. Mm. Still Africa better than other countries, even European countries. Mm. So uh, the nature are helping Africa. But, but of course, mm. the science must help also. Uh, that's why, <coughs> mm. uh, as I said, vaccination is very important during that time. Mm. So Africa will not enter into the fourth era of yeah. COVID. You know, there, there, is a, there is an era coming for uh, mm. COVID, which is they call the fourth era. Of course, uh, increasing the vaccination yeah. will reduce the mm. dangerous effect of that era in Egypt and in, in, the, uh, in the African countries, yeah. and uh, Africa can be much better than other places. Yes, uh, finally, Dr. Abdullah, how do we see the prospects for stronger cooperation among the African nations amid the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, the cooperation is not bad. Still, uh, some of the African countries like Egypt, like South Africa, Mm -hmm. like Nigeria is doing their own well to help the other poor countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, Egypt is playing a great role in that, either through sending uh, direct uh, assistance, either scientific or materials or equipment, also by negotiation with the other European countries and China and so on. Uh, Egypt is trying to, to find a way to uh, increase the number of vaccines mm -hmm. to Africa. So the co cooperation is going well. But you know, the problem is that we have uh, at least 70% mm -hmm. uh, of the African countries is a very poor countries, and they didn't have any uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. So they are waiting for support or waiting for aid or, or waiting for help from other countries. Mm -hmm. Also, the rich countries in Africa, a few, three or four or five countries, you know, they, they can't alone uh, carry the load of Africa. So they need help from the rich countries, especially those countries who are, uh, who take the resources from Africa and are living in a good standard now, like uh, Britain and France and, and Portugal and yes. other other colonial countries, you know, 
it is time that they have to repay for the African continents to help. But anyhow, you can say that African countries, yes. there is a great uh, level of cooperation between them in the question of COVID-19 by wow. information or by support or by aid or by equipment. Indeed, uh, Dr. Farah Abdullah, our health expert, uh, many thanks for watch, uh, for uh, being with us and uh, for your precious input, sir. And with that, our viewers, we come to the end of uh, this edition of Africa Today, where we have been tackling the vaccines uh, for the um, COVID-19 pandemic in Africa. Many thanks for watching.